So the MVP hype is real right now, and I haven't really thrown all that much MVP or Axiom discs, so I went ahead and grabbed a handful of them. These, these aren't all of them. These are all of them. And we're gonna go ahead and play this course here, Heritage Park in Olathe, Kansas, and we're gonna try to shoot all the long pins and shoot under par here. So let me go through what lineup we have going on here. We've got the Ion. So this one's just like, this one's pretty interesting. It's got, it's almost like a wizard profile, but it's, it's obviously um, gyro and it has like, it's almost curved on the end. It's not almost, it is like rounded on the inside of the rim here. So it feels pretty interesting. The other putters, I had to go with the Envies. I got an Electron Firm and then I just got this Glow one from my boy Anthony Danza. Should go check these out. I think he's getting more of the MVP Axiom discs, so just go check those out. These are sick. And then of course I got got a glitch. Gotta gotta go with the glitch. For mids, I've got the uplink. Hunter Hunter talked pretty good about the uplink over at the Creators Cup. He said it was pretty solid, so I had to pick one up, try it, of course, for, for this. So uh, supposed to be a really nice understable mid. The Hex. Everyone knows about the Hex. I made a video about the Hex. I'll have that linked in the description if you want to see it. But this this is just a solid, straight mid-range. Then we've got the Reactor. The thing about the Reactor is that Robbie C said... Flies like a, everything a Buzz wants to be. You don't have to see what that's all about, so... Then the fairways, I just I just have two drivers, a fairway and a distance. The fairway is going to be the Crave. Again, I don't know what plastic this is. I don't know if this is their equivalent to stars. What is that, Proton? Not sure. Uh, again, a Bedanza special. And then I've got the Streamline Trace that still has the price tag on it. Um, this feels great. Like It feels like a Wraith, a really nice Wraith at that. Um, so we're going to see how this goes. It's a little windy day, which will be interesting because the only overstable things I have is that glow envy and the glow and the glow reactor. So Let's see how this goes. Let's get into it. All right, hole one, 519 feet, par four. We're just going to go with the crave. I'm just trying to get down the middle of the fairway, have a good upshot. Not the cleanest release, but I'll take it. Totally forgot to bring my lavalier mic that goes here so hopefully the audio is not too bad this is where i really need like a strong forehand disc and mvp slash axiom have that in their lineup i don't have one here so i just take my trace and see if that will being this short be a good forehand hookup oh and that sh that pine tree is about like 200 feet and then it's like 70 feet to the right of that that's where i'm trying to go such a bad forehand. Nope. Still get a par. That's fine. All right, this one's another par four. 444 feet. If you get to that that pin right there, you're in a pretty good spot to, to get a birdie here. So, glow reactor. Let's see if it's everything Robbie cut it out to be. I'm not OB, but it's not a great, not a great spot. All right, well, I'm like perfectly framed up to uh, get a good upshot there. That that pine right there, that's like 20 feet from the basket, so. That was way too high. Too high, nose up, awful. Three sixteen straight ahead. Only problem is there's a slight headwind, and the best option is to go high hyzer. And the most overstable thing I have is this reactor, and I can't pump a high hyzer with a mid-range three hundred sixteen feet. So let's see how this goes. It is downhill, but I've also been playing terribly the past few weeks. Don't tell anyone. I feel like that should have held, but I just threw it awful. Definitely might get my first bogey here. Let's see, I got my reactor. And the best way to get there is right through this little path. That's not really a path. Baskets that way. Pretty sure this is gonna be a bogey. Oh, 
baby. <laughs> My safe car here. <laughs> Let's go, baby. I'll take that any day. With that drive off the tee, any day. All right, this one's 317, all uphill. All right there, Trace. Wow. So I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I've been playing some of the, the worst disc golf I have in a long time. Partially, because I'm like, halfway trying to change my form and get better when I'm not actually trying which is probably the worst thing to do for your game but the other thing is hopefully you can hear me with the wind the other thing is I just had a, a son so he is about four weeks old but now now when you're watching this but and whew, it's taking it out of me so yeah I'm just not throwing it very well I'm just scraping by with pars, man. I just need one birdie. All right, this one's 248. You can see the basket right there. So it's like a, a forehand or a turnover shot through this gap here, because there's, there's nothing really there to get go straight at it. But I'm gonna go hex, flat, slight ante, see if the wind can take it a little right. And even if it ends up straight, I'll still have like a 30 foot putt, so not the end of the world. I just can't hit a tree. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's so bad. Let's see if that on plate would have worked. That would have worked. That went long. Guess what? To celebrate daylight savings and the start of a new disc golf season, we are having a sale at ApolloDiscGolf.com. That means all Signature Series discs up to 20% off. So you can go and support your favorite pros, like rocking a Midnight Prowl 2 to support Kyle Klein and celebrate his most recent win at Waco this weekend, or picking up a few of the Pathfinders we have left to rock Eric Oakley, because who doesn't like rocking those six stamps that he has on his Signature Series discs? And there will be so many other discs for sale on the site. We are also doing free shipping on any order over $50. As long as you use the code TEXAS at checkout, you know, for the Texas swing of the tour, so that you can load up on discs to start out the season. And this sale is going on now to the end of March. Go to apollodiscoff.com, stock up on discs, and let's get back to the video. Now, why is MVP so popular? Well, the first reason is some guy named Simon Lazat signed with them this year. But even before that, there was a a strong crowd of people who loved MVP discs. And the biggest reason, I think, is just the, the gyro technology that they have. The gyro technology is essentially this. Like, the outside rim here is the black rim. It is more dense than the normal plastic that's in the middle here, the colored stuff. Or like with Axiom, they're just two different colors. Now the outside rim is more dense, so theoretically it should hold its spin longer in the air. And if it holds it spin longer in the air, it will keep flying longer in the air. Hence the theory is that these will fly further than the non-gyro discs. Now is that true? I mean scientifically, yes. Yes, that's true. But is it very noticeable? Not really. Like if you can't throw very far, then you'll not throw very far just with gyro. Like, it, it will make a small difference, but like, I think Drew Gibson tried it out and it's like five, ten feet of difference on like 500 foot drive, so even at 500 feet that's negligible, you know? So, but I mean, it, it might just give you an added security knowing that the gyro is gonna help you. Like, I don't know. But I think the mold itself plays a bigger factor to that. For example, the hex here, it is just, a super flat disc. So this mold like wouldn't have like a ton of glide, but because it does the gyro, it still flies pretty far compared to other mids like it that have that glide. So like the J, for example. So this doesn't fly much further than the J. The J actually probably flies further than it, but that's because the J 
the design of the disc just glides further than the design of this disc. But if the J was designed exactly like the hex, I bet you the hex would fly further consistently. So the mold makes a bigger impact on the distance and the flight and all of that than the gyro does in my humble opinion. But let's see if I can actually get some birdies. So 401 feet, you pretty much just want to end up directly straight under those trees over there and then you go far right into the woods. This might be my first bogey because it's a straight headwind and throwing a straight disc to land straight or even hyzer that far and low. <sighs> I've got to throw my reactor really clean and really hard which those two don't normally coincide with one another especially when you're not throwing well. <laughs> ah! I've never claimed to be good at this game so you know. awful at this game. That like self-fulfilling prophecy type thing. I feel like I just did that to myself. 515 way down there. I'm gonna try my reactor because again it's a headwind. I want to get past this tree. If I get it on the right past that tree I should be good for a second shot. Just realized that my uh, mic was backwards on the tee, so I switched to a Crave because there's no wind and then I hyzered it way too hard. You want to get to the right of that tree, forehand past that pine and to the right. But even if I get like a perfect shot, I might have like a 60 footer, like it, the birdie's out of the question from here. Man, I am really missing like a fireball type disc. I think it's the fireball, is that it? I'm stuck with finessing a trace on all these forehands and I'm not good at forehands, so finessing a forehand is not. I need a fireball, man. Part of me just wants to run this. Could be terrible, could be all right. Gotta get a birdie though, man. I will say the trace, this thing feels great. Like it feels, it feels like a very nice wraith. Like wraiths I know like in a bow they can be inconsistent. Which consistency is another thing with these. I'll talk about later. But this thing feels like a great wraith. Like a, like not an overstable wraith, but a nice like stable wraith or grace. It does feel like the rim is smaller like the wraith versus the grace, the grace. It's pretty fast for 11 speed. I think it's actually 11.5, but Trace feels and flies great. I have thrown this a few times backhand, not for this round yet, but yeah. 328 down there to the pine and left. There's a little gap in front of that pine right there. So I'm gonna try the Crave. It doesn't feel like there's very much wind. As long as I get it enough, give it enough hyzer, it should be fine. Nope. Not going to be fine. <laughs> That'll work. If you didn't see it, that forehand landed. Yeah. Right next to the basket, so. Still have yet to get a birdie. Basket's down there, 309 feet. You need to go to the right of these trees over here. It's a little bit uphill, so it play, plays like, I would say it plays like 330, 340-ish, maybe, especially when you have to go under those trees. Wind feels down, but I'm also by a bunch of trees, so we'll see how this goes. And it's obviously more open out there, so it could be windy out there, and I can't feel it, says I'm in here, but we'll see when I, when I throw. No! 
All right, now that I'm in the open, there is a breeze coming this way, so that's probably why the crepe turned more than I thought it should. The crepe feels like it's a great hyzer flip driver. Not in the wind, though. Not in the wind. So this hole is perfect for the crave. Like even with this slight wind, there's not, there's a good amount of trees out there, so it's not gonna cover it. 429 feet, par four, but the first like 310 feet down this straight tunnel. So as long as you hit that tunnel and make it, so that first pin's about 325. If you get down there to that pin and left, you're in a golden position. So this is like, Prime crave line. See how it goes. Oh, it's, of course it's a headwind. <sighs> of course it's a headwind. That one was partially my fault. Didn't throw it clean. Okay, so honestly, when I first got the crave, I was like hoping, and like it looked like it was gonna be a really nice like hyzer flip, dead straight fade, T bird. And so I was like, I could totally bag these craves over my like T-Birds and just have like an overstable T-Bird slot. But I'm feeling like, which this is a good thing, feeling like these could replace my Echo Star T-Birds. And that's saying a lot. Because my Echo Star T-Birds are like my bread and butter in my bag. Like I don't really pull out my more overstable T-Birds much. Like I would have today, obviously, but like, and you beat one up, it might be my understable one, and then the other one is just my dead straight one. It'd be golden. Golden. Let's see if I can get out of this for the par. And of course I noticed that I didn't zoom out again. I apologize. You can see the basket over there. Right there. So I'm right here. That uplink's amazing. Partially because like no matter how you throw it or what you do with it. Like I barely threw that and it even hit that tree and it still just kept going right. And that's a really nice disc to have in your bag. Like everyone thinks they need a tilt. You need like something like that in your bag for get out of trouble stuff. Cause a firebird or like an overstable destroyer type thing can always do that at short distances. Like I'm in the tilt is overrated camp. Who's with me? Let's go, let's go get a par. Another par. All right, 454 par four uphill. You just want to get over these trees and as far right as possible. See what this trace is all about. I swear there was like a crosswind. Didn't do anything. Well, that was a terrible shot as I uh, parked the short pin. That is not ideal. So there is a straight shot, but there's with all these branches here, that's that's a pretty tough shot. So I like to go over to the right, like I said. Ideally, I would have been over there, so it'd be easier hyzer, but I think I can still get there with me, right? My reactor. Let's see. That was way too low. I needed to put that way higher because that just went way too far. I don't want a birdie so bad. I keep getting these pars and I'm one over par. I still have a putt. I could, I could nail this like 40 footer. It's downhill, so it's a chance. Ah! Can't get something on it. Give it a chance. All right, I really need to get a birdie on one of the next three holes if I'm gonna do anything. I'm not playing well at all. This one, 295 straight ahead. It's really low ceiling, so it plays more. And it's, and it's like a slight uphill. Uh, you gotta push forward a little bit. I would say it plays closer to 315-ish. I don't know, with the low ceiling. It's not an easy 295. That's, that's what I'm saying. That thing's a lot flippier than I thought it think it'd be. I missed my line and I still, still ended up well. Nice. 
I'm so bad at this game. I don't remember when I played this course this bad. I'm plus two now, and I'm lucky to even be at that. So, see how the rest of this round goes. Also, just a heads up, I won't be talking as much to the camera these next few holes just because I, my phone's about to die, so I have to plug it in and play at the same time, and you don't want to be listening to audio straight out of the phone. You want to be listening to a good mic, so that's why. Not because I'm frustrated, even though I'm a little, I'm a little frustrated. That was gonna be so good! One of the easiest holes in the course, and I hit a tree. <sighs> okay, I lied. When I said the next three, I did not I did not include this hole. This hole is pretty tough. This one's 441, all uphill, par four. You wanna get like all the way up to that second basket, which is first basket, which is 300 feet, like all the way uphill, but it plays like I would say it plays like 340 because um, it's so far uphill. You want to get there and then it's, even then you still have a really hard up shot to get it a, a three. So this is a bonus birdie. Definitely don't want to bogey it though. I've had enough. We've all know I've had enough of those. I really like that crave. I really like it. Uplink, amazing. On the board. All right, the baskets way down there, over there, 341. So you wanna go through this gap and hook right. And this one's actually one of those few holes that's it's a better backhand turnover line than a forehand line. Cause you, these trees play so close. So perfect hole for the Crave. I wouldn't have said that at the beginning of the round, but now that I've thrown it some, this is the perfect hole for it. Went a little too far right, but you got a putt. Weak. Ugh. That was the third hole that I needed a birdie. Anyways, I'm still at one over. I can I can get two birdies. This one's 450. Someone's fishing down there, so uh, I can't hit him anyways on the drive. We'll figure out what to do on the up shot though. I suck at this game. Yep. Excuse me. Do you mind if I throw it to the basket here? Okay. So bad. Point of like the backhand hyzer, but can't do that right now. Another easy birdie that I've made not easy at all. Well, that really stinks, to be honest. Cause that was like, is one of the easiest par fours you'll ever see. Cause it's 450 wide open. You just need not going to the water and shanked it low. And then I can't go to the shot that I'm best at. Cause guys fishing. Anyways, next two holes. This one's really easy. Like 229 straight ahead. I should get this in my sleep, so. Playing so bad, dude. Four sixty two uphill, four par four, way up there by the trees, way down there. There's this white pole and that's like 150 feet short probably. If I get up to that white pole, that'd be great because it's all uphill, so this round. It's been great.
So, in conclusion, I am uh, terrible at disc golf right now. So, no, but seriously, these discs, a lot of people are all hyped about the gyro, which, in my honest opinion, like, being hyped for MVP about the gyro is really like a disservice to their discs. Like the hype shouldn't be about the gyro. The gyro, like it's like, yes, it might help you throw farther. It's not gonna make a difference that much in your game at all. But what is gonna make the difference and what the hype should be about are the great molds. Like the, the Crave is so good. Like I thought it might be the Heiser Flip to stable disc, but it wasn't, it was Heiser Flip to straight, Heiser Flip to understable. It's a great mold. The uplink, like everyone needs that understable, get out of jail free, will turn over no matter what you do type of disc to get out of trouble with. Get that tilt out of your bag and put the uplink in your bag. The Envy, I've, I've always thought the Envy was great. It's, everyone knows what that is by now. Then the trace just, it felt like a great wraith, like not gonna lie. I didn't throw it well at all whatsoever today. I did not do it justice whatsoever, but I have thrown it before and it's been pretty awesome. So I might have to do an, a separate video with that one. And then when you get to the consistency of the disc, that's another thing that people like hype about. Don't really have time to go into that today, but that will be in another video for another time. And I'll link that here when we do have, when that does happen. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Hopefully you can hear all this with the wind, so.